probably the toughest challenge any parent could ever face is having to tell your son. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I left the hospital and left Dr Annie and his team at... She died at quarter to six on a Friday night and we left about an hour later. I came out of the hospital. I think I woke up every patient there because they just screamed. Mm. Screamed because I'm, I'm a Christian, I'm a man of faith. I screamed at God, why? Mm. Why have you left my boy without a mum? Mm. And we eventually got in the car and all the way there, all I could think as we travelled back home was this story from 18 months ago. He went on holiday and he's got a little cuddly toy, his favourite one like all kids do. It was a little mon monkey and it's called Uu. And unfortunately he got caught up in a laundry in the hotel and was last seen heading to Athens. Oh. All I could remember was his reaction to that. He was heartbroken. And I thought, I've got to go home and tell him his mum's gone. And, you know, what I didn't give him credit for, kids, as you know, they grew up and they developed so much in 18 months. But all the way there, my heart was pounding and uh, well, lots of family and friends were there and they'd taken the kids back from the hospital. He only knew, he went in to see her twice that day. And he said, bring him in. He'll thank you for it in later life. But I didn't tell Ethan she was going. I just said, mummy, seriously. Ill. And I, I held him to her ear a couple of times and he, he said that he loved her and then went to play with his cousins. And I got home and I thought, I've just got to, I've got to grab him and tell him. So I took him upstairs and looked into his deep brown eyes and I just said, I'm, Ethan, I'm really sorry, but they couldn't make mummy better and you can't dress it up. I just said, mummy's, mummy's died. Mm. And he, um, he collapsed onto the floor and I just collapsed down there with him. I just held him, I held him and I rolled on the floor with him. And he's been amazing since, but that, I would never ever wish that on my worst, worst enemy, to have to tell your kid. He's got no brothers and sisters, he went for IVF twice, we couldn't have any more kids. He's been dealt a really tough, tough blow in life. Yeah. Um, and at the age of eight, to have lost his mum already. I, that's what I find the most heart, heartbreaking yeah. thing in the whole thing. How are you, um, how are you both coping, oh, coping now? Because you, you have your, your snack notes. No, it's okay. It's all right. It's okay, it's all right. Sorry. You, uh, you have your snack notes, which you leave for him, don't you? You've got a handful there. I have. Do it on. Thank you. you. I was talking to you just before we came on set and you said one of the hardest things is, you know, you, life does move on like it does and when you're going to school and it's other parents or it's people and they don't know what to say to you, mm. you say you feel like a leper because nobody can, nobody knows what to say to somebody yeah. that's just lost their wife so quickly. No. A I'm, son that's just lost his mother. Yeah, partner. I mean, the common comment is that there are no words. I mean, if I was being really real, I could say there is a dictionary. Um, there's plenty of words in there, but I can understand it. I think as a society we're not very good at doing grief mm. no. And we're so scared of saying the wrong thing mm. that all too often we say nothing and what it ends up being is It just leaves you in a really isolated place I remember just going just to simply get some meat from the butchers quite soon after she went and some neighbors of ours I won't say who they are, but there's only 34 houses. So it narrows it down um, She was behind me in the queue and I turned around expecting to say hello to her and she literally looked at the floor like that because she, she couldn't bring herself to say. to say anything. And a dad at my school just said, how are you doing one day? And I said, I'm struggling. He has never said another word to me um, because he doesn't know what to say. But I have yeah. to say, I want to get this right, is that my school, Ethan's school, have been totally amazing. Oh, and actually there's, there's mums, there's dads, they've been simply amazing. They did a fundraiser Friday night, but there are some who just don't want to get it wrong, so they stay quiet. Yeah. You've been very yeah. honest online, very open mm. online, and I don't think you necessarily intended to, to, no. to play it out that no. way, did you? No, I, I, I lay there on our bed on the Saturday after she went, and I just, I don't know, I just wanted to let people know, not because I wanted a, a massive reaction, I just wanted to let people know, and I did, and I didn't expect what happened over the next few days to happen, but I mean, a mate of mine, he messaged from Australia saying David Campese, the famous Aussie rugby player, has retweeted it, and I thought, why is this resonating with people? Maybe it's just because I'm being honest and I'm being real, and I'm saying I'm no more important than anyone else, my grief is no more important than anyone else, of course it isn't, but maybe I'm just sharing something that a lot of people find really difficult to share, and sharing in a way that maybe, maybe some people haven't heard before. Um, Andy, as Simon was saying then, you know, that, that 24 hours, you know, the, the, the GP didn't do the blood test, but didn't think about doing the blood test, but it wouldn't have made much difference, as, as you say. What do you, what, what is it that takes you so fast? What, what, what do you look for? The problem is, is that when you have acute leukaemia especially, the white blood cells are growing so quickly, so rapidly, that it can affect the body really dramatically. But I think the problem for patients and for GPs is that the initial symptoms can be really 
very vague things. They can be fatigue, a bit of bruising, weight loss. But at the same time, leukaemia and blood cancers are really important to diagnose and try to diagnose them as quickly as possible because treatments are getting better and better. And so tragically, Gemma died. But many patients now are cured and it is very helpful if there's an awareness of leukaemia so we can start treating patients as quickly as possible.